DeMarcus Cousins has had a string of bad luck when it comes to injuries, and throughout his NBA career, he was never viewed very positively. Back when he was on the Kings, he was recognized as one of the most volatile, unpredictable players in the entire league. Despite having the talent of a superstar, and while well, he was a superstar, arguably the best center in the league during his prime, but the attitude concerns were always there. Cousins led the league in technical fouls and ejections for multiple seasons at an insane rate that we haven't seen since Rashid Wallace was in the league. How's it going folks, my name's Andy, and today we're going to talk about the DeMarcus Cousins era in Sacramento. What went wrong, and who should be blamed for their failures? Cousins himself or the organization who put the rosters together? The Sacramento Kings, the last time they won a championship was in 1951, when they used to be called the Rochester Royals and played in New York. Ever since then, they've had a ton of different eras when they were playoff contenders, dark horse contenders, and even a short stretch when they were actual contenders, the favorites to win the championship. Unfortunately, they were not able to win anything for a long time and not even reach the finals. In fact, since the Kings were relocated to Sacramento in 1985, they've only made one conference finals appearance. That was in 2002, and I'm sure we all know how that turned out. Cousins would get drafted in the 2010 NBA Draft as the 5th overall pick from a very stacked Kentucky team. Coming in, scouts described Cousins as a man amongst boys at the college level. Cousins' combination of size, length, and strength is simply unparalleled at this level of competition. There are only a handful of players that can even match up with him from a physical standpoint. Once he gets the ball where he wants it, Cousins is more than skilled enough to know what to do with it, showing quick feet, terrific footwork, excellent body control, and fantastic touch to finish off plays. Oftentimes, you'll see him creating his own shot by spinning off his man abruptly in impressive fashion, and then just using his terrific length to convert easily at the basket. Although he isn't the most explosive guy you'll find in terms of his ability to play above the rim, this aspect of his game can probably be improved as well. It's safe to say that the scouts were spot on. His playstyle would translate pretty well into the NBA, but it did take a while for him to get going. Early on in his first few years in the NBA, he would also struggle with things like committing too many fouls and letting his emotions get the best of him, which of course led to a lot of technical fouls and a handful of ejections. Hilariously, his player comparison from NBADraft.net was Eddie Curry slash Benoit Benjamin. Really? Well, he certainly exceeded those expectations by a mile. But besides that, his first few years in the league were kinda rough. Cousins put up some great numbers for a young player. In his first three seasons, he averaged about 16 points, 10 rebounds, and 2 assists. But he was rather inefficient for a big man. He shot less than 45% from the field and had an overall true shooting percentage of just 50%. The average true shooting percentage for a center during those years was 59%, so Cousins was well below the league average. For his massive 6'11", 280 pound frame, long arms, he was quite underwhelming at finishing around the rim. On his shots between 0 and 3 feet, he only hit 62% of them, which is lower than many point guards. And his shots in the paints between 3 to 10 feet, he only hit about 35% of those. Additionally, the Kings were pretty bad. Well, <laughs> they were really bad. They won fewer than 30 games each season, with a roster full of young guys, all of whom were trying to prove themselves and played kinda selfishly. Of course, that includes Cousins too. Overall, their rosters had a lot of turnover. From guys like Tyreek Evans, Jason Thompson, Omri Caspi, to John Sammons, Isaiah Thomas, Marcus Thornton. Most of these guys were really young, but they burned out really quickly with the Kings and got traded away or let go in just two or three seasons. However, starting in the 2013-14 season, Cousins' fourth season in the NBA, things started to get better. Under new head coach Mike Malone, Cousins was able to develop a great relationship with him, and he was the first coach who Cousins really respected. Malone knew how talented Cousins was, but his emotional outbursts and short leash always held him back. But not now. Malone immediately made Cousins the main focus of the offense. His usage rate skyrocketed to 32.7%. That was second amongst all qualified players, right behind Kevin Durant's 33%. And Durant won MVP that year. 
so Cousins' usage rate was about the same as an MVP level player. The Kings also acquired Rudy Gay from Toronto, and now the Kings had three players averaging over 20 points a game, Cousins, Thomas, and Gay. Cousins had a tremendous season, averaging nearly 23 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists, and a career-high 50% from the field. Unfortunately, the Kings as a team were still not very good. They still weren't an efficient offensive team, nor a good defensive team, as they finished bottom 10 in both offensive and defensive rating that season. They only managed to win 28 games again, and then in the following season, Mike Malone would get fired, much to the dismay of Cousins. Cousins said that the firing of Malone was unexpected and emotional for the team, because so many of the players believed in him. It was a lot different than Cousins' previous coaches who he really did not connect with. Malone was the first coach who he developed a great relationship with. A couple years later, and a couple of coaches came and went, and the Kings were still at the same place they were when Cousins first got there. They did manage to win a stunning 33 games in the 2015-16 season. That 33-49 and record would be the best record of the DeMarcus Cousins era, and also his last full season there. He had an insane season, averaging about 27, 11, and 3 over a block and a steal, and also developed a decent 3-point shot. That was the most complete DeMarcus Cousins we've ever seen. In that season, George Carl would be their head coach, but despite the Kings' slight improvements, it was a catastrophe behind the scenes. Apparently, right when George Carl became the coach, he tried to trade Cousins all season long. At the 2016 trade deadline and over the summer, but to no avail. It was this season where Cousins made that infamous tweet, with the whole snakes in the grass emojis, which was speculated to be aimed at George Carl. This was also the season where Cousins' patience was running really thin, and along with multiple altercations between him and the coaching staff, him and the front office, the tension was at an all-time high. In May of 2016, shortly after George Carl got fired, he aired out all of the dirty laundry. In an interview, Carl opened up about his experiences coaching DeMarcus Cousins and his relationship with the organization. This is what was said. Carl was doomed by the organization's chronic dysfunction from the start. Carl was a popular hire among Kings fans when he replaced Tyrone Corbin, who was treated like a doormat by Cousins after Michael Malone's brutally ill-conceived firing. But Carl stepped into a situation that doubled as a septic tank long before his plane touched down. Then Carl himself would say that, When they supported Cousins instead of me, I felt, Okay, I'm in the compromised position. Cuz has the power. They sent that message many times, too many times sent it to the players. And the players wanted someone to stand up to Cuz, and they wanted it to be their coach. But at that point, I realized that you either you compromise or you blow it up. And my job was to make us a better basketball team and get to the end of the year. And to be fair, Carl did make them a better basketball team. There was really just no way to reconcile and fix everything. Even though the team did choose Cousins over Carl, it was only one year later when Cousins got traded at the 2017 trade deadline. At the end, in six full seasons with the team, the Kings managed to win over 30 games just once. Cousins became a four-time All-Star and two-time All-NBA member during his time there. But putting all that stuff to the side, what really hurt the Kings were their lackluster draft choices. In the 2011 draft, they made a draft day trade to swap Bismack Biombo for Jimmer Fredette. In the 2012 draft, they drafted Thomas Robinson, who would be out of the league in a few years, and he would become one of the biggest busts ever. In the 2013 draft, they took Ben McLemore, who was supposedly, quote, the next Ray Allen. Yeah, not really. In the 2014 draft, they took Nick Stauskas. In the 2015 draft, they took Willie Cauley-Stein, who was a great pick to be honest, but didn't really fit too well with Cousins. In the 2016 draft, they got Giorgios Papayanis in a trade. The majority of these picks did not turn out well, and most players were gone after just a couple seasons. It also didn't help that Tyreek Evans, the 2010 Rookie of the Year, didn't pan out as expected. With him, it was a combination of his injuries and trying to play him out of position which caused him to drop off. All of this, combined with the uncertainty and instability of the Kings organization and coaching staff, that's pretty much why the Cousins era in Sacramento was a major disappointment. 
Not all the blame should go to Cousins himself, as he blossomed into a legit superstar, although there were situations where he could have handled it better. And that's all folks, that sums up the story of the DeMarcus Cousins era in Sacramento. It was filled with a ton of highs and lows, well, <laughs> mainly lows, but uh, it was one of those eras that make people think, what could have been done differently? A lot could have been done differently, mainly through management, culture, and drafting better players. Organizations start from the top down, so if the players don't get along with the coaches and the front office and things like that, it'll never work out. Thank you everyone so much for watching, let me know your thoughts on this era. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, I'll see you next time. Peace.